basically I've got a little mini DJ setup inspired by Noisia because I've been looking at their DJ sets and they I can see they're not DJing like other DJs do it and like clubs and gigs and stuff with a pair of CDJs or maybe four CDJs and a mixer. They're using a DJM 850 white. Probably that was the on the Let It Roll set. Uh, but they uh, and they're also using a launch run mini. So I was just uh, hanging around in this quarantine here because our country is being quarantined. And, uh, and so basically, I decided. To tr yeah, basically, I decided to try it by myself, like uh, set up some MIDI stuff, warp the tracks, and yeah. So I started before the quarantine. I started messing around. And I started with this controller. This is actually how I started DJing. If you've seen my video when I DJ the like the New Year Christmas mix, this is what I used it used uh, for that mix. And basically, I was fiddling around. I mapped these for the faders, EQ, and I don't really use the CFX and the color effects. So uh, I mapped them for reverb, and I mapped these tempo sliders for the uh, ping pong delays, yeah, the dry weight of the ping pong delays. I'm planning to get a launch pad as well, but I'm not trying to be a complete copycat, but it's the best way of doing it because what I have lying around here is uh, an Akai MPK Mini Mark II. What I sometimes want to do, I add this onto the mixer so I can control the pads and I map these to the, I'll show you what enables them later. And I have, uh, I have banks A and B, so instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. instead of eight pads, I can have sixteen pads because I have two banks. But that's still not enough. And I also use with that this together. But it was just filling up the table, and it couldn't really fit. So what I'm doing is. Now, I'll put these aside. I sometimes DJ with this with record box and when this is really like, this is what I use when I like make tracks and stuff. But uh, now I'm using just the mixer and I'll show, you, I'll show you how in a minute. So basically, just can you see everything what I'm doing on there? So basically what we're doing is this Ableton DJ thing. So let's hop into Ableton. So what we're, first what we're going to do is we're going to remove the MIDI channels like that. Then we're also going to remove the delay and reverb. Some people if they DJ, DJ, some people when they DJ with Ableton they leave those two on and then do the sends but uh, that's not what we're doing. So basically first we've got the simple setup. We're going to press MIDI here on the top right corner and then we're going to go to the left fader and wiggle the left fader on here. And this might not work for you so just to make sure, press mode on the, uh, the top uh, Q buttons for the track to control Z1 only. But anyway, if it doesn't uh, work with your Z1, if you're using a Z1. And uh, yeah, so you, we've set this fader up. As you can see, this fader is not set up yet. So we go to MIDI, we'll click on this fader here, and we wiggle it. And now, if we come out of MIDI mode, you can see got the two uh, two channels, two faders mapped. Now what, what we're going to do is we've plugged this in and we go into live. Before you do that actually, before you do this, actually I'll cut this bit out. We go, we go into the preferences and go to audio and you uh, output, you, uh, you select the track to control Z1 output, go to output configuration, you only need like 1, 2 and 3 and 4. Press OK, then you go to link MIDI and then you select your track and track to control input, track to control output and turn all of these on here. Anyway, so now we have mapped these two faders to Ableton. There's Annoying noises coming from there, but what can I do? Now we're going to go here to our Q output and select 3 and 4, this is 1 and 2. Then this solo button goes blue, we click it, and now we're in clue mo Q mode, so it can Q stuff with these. But not yet, because we have to set up the queuing. So you go into MIDI, press the left Q, like headphones button there, 
then you press the cl click the Q button because you want to use that one. And then you go to the right one and then you press the Q button to there. Then you come out of medium mode, you can see if we click the, turn it on, the Q comes on there, turn it on the Q comes on there. I don't know why, but I have to tap it twice to come out. So yeah, tap it twice and you'll come out. So tap it twice again, you're in, twice you're out. Anyway. So now we've got so we've set up the two Q buttons and we've set up, set up the faders. Next, I'm going to set up the master tempo because you were in Ableton. You don't control tr tempos of like uh, one uh, the, the track playing on deck one and track playing on deck two. You only control the master tempo. So we're going to go here and we're going to click 172 first. But what I'm going to do is go to MIDI. And then, as you can see, the Q volume is analog, so it controls the headphone volume, but this is MIDI, Q mix. So I'm going to map it to control our master tempo. So I'm going to click on the master tempo in MIDI mode, and then I'm going to wiggle this. And as you can see, if we come out of MIDI mode, we can see that this controls our tempo, but it goes up from 20 uh, to 999 BPM, which we don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop back into MIDI mode. If we scroll down here we can see tra song tempo here. Um, basically the minimum is going to be 172 BPM beats per minute and uh, then the maximum is going to be 176 because that's really what I need. Maybe 775 would even be enough. So yeah. So I've selected the tempo there. Now we come out of MIDI, mo MIDI mode. Sorry. And now if we wobble the cubics thing, you can see 172 the minimum, in between 174.0, that doesn't really matter, and 176 there, so you can just do transitions and stuff with the tempo. Next, what we're going to map is the EQs, the highs, mids, and lows on both, de uh, both decks. So we're going to go click uh, audio one, so which is our first deck, and we're going to further put in... So we're gonna put it. We're gonna type in uh, EQ three. We'll just type in EQ, and then you go EQ three, which is what we want. Now you go to MIDI mode again. So go to gain high. You can see it says high here. Wiggle that. Go to gain mid. Wiggle that. And go to gain low. Wiggle that. So when we come out of MIDI mode, you can see we've got our highs mids and lows mapped. Now we're going to go to deck 2, get the EQ3 on there too, go back to MIDI mode, sorry my ears itchy for some reason, so go to MIDI mode, gain low, gain mid, and gain high. We come out of MIDI mode and we can see that these are all mapped. Yeah, so we've got all these EQs mapped. Next, what we're going to map, the main volume is that it doesn't control the master on here, it actually controls the output here, so this is not MIDI. We're going to control the, we're going to do the two gain knobs next, so we're going to hop onto deck one, which is all the one, and I'm going to actually rename it to deck one, and go to here, rename deck, oopsie daisy, deck Two. Now uh, we we've got the EQs. The, well, this is going to be the yeah. So we've got the EQs. Next we're going to do the gain. So we're going to hop onto deck one, and I'm going to go to audio effects again and type in limiter. Double click it, and here we go. So we're going to go into MIDI mode again. Click the gain knob on the limiter and wiggle the gain knob here. Now we've got the gain here mapped. Go to deck do, repeat it, so double click, MIDI mode, and gain, then wiggle the gain on deck two. Now we're just going to check it, so deck one, yes, deck two, yes. So basically when the two tracks are uh, coming, I like, to, I like to keep this around um, about coming to that here, the levels. I'm going to, uh, so, because basically why I have two things, you could say I can just mix with these, 
uh, like fade from one track and bring it in and then take it out. But actually, the reason why I use these game notes is to fine tune the volume so they're both the same tracks volume. So I can basically, if I'm like this and it's a build up, I want to flick it, I can't just flick it and keep it at the correct volume so both tracks are like the, at the same volume. So I just trim them like this and then I can just flick them and down. Like that. So now we've got basically we've got our gains mapped on both decks, EQs mapped. Next, I'm gonna do my effects. So I only use the ping pong delay. As you can see, we're gonna when we turn this on, we can adjust the parameter of the uh, um, of the EQ, not the EQ. Sorry, the ping pong delay. But it would be like this: you take out the lows and take out the highs, but it doesn't work like that in Ableton. So it's going to be basically dry wet. How much percent you're going to use? So just check the camera for the minutes. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go onto deck one, and we're going to type in. Uh, go in here, ping pong delay. So at deck one now. So you double click here. We've got the ping pong delay here. So I like to keep my feedback around 80 something then I'm going to go to MIDI mode I'm going to press the dry wet so we're at deck one first so I'm going to wiggle this knob on deck one the filter effects knob okay now we come out of MIDI mode it should be mapped yes it is we're going to go to deck two double click it I'm going to go to MIDI mode then click uh, dry wet on here and wiggle it now, we can go to deck one because we need to do the on off thing. We can also, yeah, we can also have it so if you press it when it turns blue, it could change to another effect like reverb, ping pong, reverb, ping pong. But I just want to have the ping pong delay turning off and on. So, first, you want to have them so the lights are off. This is how I'm doing it with my control. I'm, going, I'm not, I'm not going to use the crossfade, but we can, I'll show you later. So, go to MIDI mode. Well, deck one, so you press this button here, and then you're gonna press this. And you come out of MIDI mode, as you can see, we're turning the ping pong delay off and on now with this button. Now we're gonna do the same there, so the button has to be off like that. I mean, the light has to be off, sorry. You go to MIDI mode, you go here, and you press the button. And now you come out of MIDI mode, and it turns off and on too. So I'm gonna turn them off. Now, uh, so basically what we've done, we've mapped the EQ, we've mapped the knobs, next I'm going to map the crossfader, so you're going to want to go here, turn these on, uh, I mean turn the X1 on, and then you can see this is our crossfader which is going to uh, go through the deck, so A, this is going to be deck A, so you select that, this is going to be B, you can see A and B, and now when you, we're going to go to MIDI mode, you're going to go to the crossfader, wiggle it, and now the crossfader should go here. There, so we've mapped the crossfader too. So I'm not going to really use it, but just to show you guys how to do it, I just did it now. So A can assign word the decks to the crossfader with these A B buttons down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to what you said. So basically, you're going to go if you want to add your music and stuff. Go to add folder here, and you can drag in your stuff. Uh, but I'm not, actually I don't want to add a folder so cancel I've got a folder which is called DMB folder I've got my drum based stuff so I'm going to get my one of my tracks which is not this one because I haven't released it yet it's coming out soon so I'm going to place Rumble which I have released on the left and Arrival of the Bass on the right side now we're going to first let's warp Rumble so let's double click it I'm going to press warp. Now, you should put it at the beginning of the track, but I think this is the beginning because Rumble starts, so it fades in. So basically, how, how I'm going to be controlling which track I'm playing is by these keys. I'm going to go into here so I can go around and stuff. And just, let's just play Rumble. This is the original BPM you have to put into here. But it is 172, so let's just check if it's in beat or not. I'm going to put my headphones on, so, and I'm going to, yes, oh, it's on Q mode, I think. Yes, it's on Q mode. I'm going to put my headphones on, turn the Q volume down a bit. Okay, I'm going to play this track, and I'm going to see if it's in uh, the tempo. So 
I've got the metronome in here. Got the headphones. I always be like this. Uh, but uh, now I'm just testing the BPM if it's warped correctly. I think it is. So here comes the beat. Gonna do some effects. Okay, that's in beat, so I'm just gonna turn it down to here with the gain knobs we did. So, as you can see, it's up to here. So that's in beat. That's in beat. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it by pressing here. Now I'm going to go ahead and warp the other one, so I'm going to go to Arrival of the Bass, which is another one of my tracks, so I'm going to press warp. Now I already remember this is, done it, this is wrong, because I already remember the original BPM of Arrival of the Bass is 170, so we're going to go into here, we're going to type 170, because that's the original BPM. Now, we're going to go ahead See, let's say, because Ableton doesn't always do the warp mark, let's say, uh, wait, oopsie daisy. So I'm going to do this all again, sorry, so go to warp, 170. Okay, now, let's say, the, let's say Ableton figured out that the starting point was actually here, uh, here. So what you want to do is you want to go to where this track actually starts and press and go click and set 1.1 here but let's say you want to start it uh, around here where this beat begins so you're going to go control click and set 1.1 1, 1, 1 here so and when you're going to play it, listen <laughs> So beat, and there we go. That's basically I. Uh, we've now uh, set both of the things up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition from rumble into arrival of the bass. So this is the the live stream I did actually last time. What I did is I plugged this output into the sound card, but one we've got really dodgy cables around here, so it didn't work, and you can only hear one channel. Um, so yeah, I'm not live streaming, but the last live stream, this is how I did it. This is how I DJed at the last live stream. So I'm just gonna do a tr little transition, just to explain with two of my tracks. So yeah, let's start with Rumble. You can hear the metronome in here. I've got the queuing on. Even if I turn the queuing on from both of the tracks, you can still hear the metronome on here. So basically, now I'm going to go put, put my headphones, one ear on only, one headphone on only, not both of them. Now I'm just going to check if this is correct.
what you can do is go into here and load in all what are, how many tracks you want just load in lots of tracks and you can just do a DJ set I wasn't really I don't really transition from rumble to arrival of the bass so sorry the transition wasn't uh, the best transition in the world but that's basically the uh, simple way of how to do a transition that's how well how I do transitions not through these two songs because they don't really match each other that well but yeah so, hope you enjoyed this video guys, this is how I DJ, uh, and yeah, if you've got any questions, just write them in the comments, and um, thank you for watching this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and then next to the subscribe button you'll find uh, the notification bell, and click it, and uh, make sure that all, all the notifications are turned on. Click here if you want to subscribe, click over there to check that video out over there, and check this video out over here too. This is Infinite Films 10, signing out. Bye.